<sighs> what is speed flying? It's a, it's a good question. In my opinion, it's the, the most fun you can have with a piece of nylon and some rope. Speed flying is a fringe discipline of paragliding where you favor proximity to the terrain and speed over sustained flight. The objective is follow the terrain as close and as fast as possible. So it's a controlled descent with a potential for acrobatic maneuvers and high speeds. Opposed to paragliding, where the wings are anywhere from 20 meters squared to 28 meters squared, depending on your weight range, speed wings are anywhere from 15 down to six. You're hitting speeds of about 90 miles an hour on a six meter. Everything happens a lot faster, a lot less room for error, and usually no reserve. So if something happens between launch and landing, you gotta take the brunt of it. That's the biggest thrill you can have. It's a great way to see the outdoors. Just some string and some nylon and, and you're good to go. My name's Scotty. Uh, I'm from New Zealand. I am a full-time bartender. I also do a little bit of management around the bar. I create my own schedule. Working day shifts gives me the uh, potential to fly morning and afternoon. And if the weather permits, I do both. So that'll be a 7,000 foot day. Hello. Hey, honey. Um, how long until you're going to be done? Um, just finishing up a couple orders, so like 15 minutes. And do you, do you sort of go hiking? Yeah, definitely. Scott and I'm from New Zealand, from the same hometown as Scott, and I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I got into flying because Scott taught me. So when we first started dating, obviously he's obsessed with it. It became apparent straight away that <laughs> flying is his life. And he just asked me one day, oh, would you be interested in getting into it? And I was like, fuck yes, it looks amazing. I so badly want him to be recognized as the best or one of the best speed flyers in the world. He works at the bar until midnight, 1, 2 a.m. He comes home, I'm already fast asleep. Every single day, up at five, walking up the mountain, sometimes twice a day. I have not seen this much passion and dedication in anyone ever. Like, I'm so fucking proud of him every single day. <laughs> I actually met Scotty uh, just uh, about two and a half years ago now. Realized uh, a lot of our goals with flying were pretty similar, so I started getting after it. The first time we met up, we were actually out at Dominguez, which is a big cliffy site. And we had been wanting to do this one line that was a cliff launch, but a little bit of a tailwind that day. And launched it, flew down, and thought, wow, that was pretty gnarly. Uh, Scotty's new enough, there's no way he's going to try something that crazy. And just a moment later, we see him tucking off the cliff in his cowboy boots, <laughs> full sending, and <laughs> giving it the old yeehaw. And that was the first time flying with Scotty. <laughs> He's willing to send it for sure. I 
So my name is Derek Hera. I am an anesthesiologist. I try to keep people comfy and get them through surgery safe. Allows me to pay for fun hobbies. So as far as managing the risk, it's always a fine balance. Of course, our sport, everything about it is inherently dangerous and risky, so just simply doing it is a fair bit of risk. I mean, you're always going to be around risk in everyday life. There's always going to be something that's risky. Speed flying as a voluntary thing to do with your body, it's a uh, very high consequence. You know, it's risk and reward. For me, it's totally worth the risk that I'm putting my body through. Number one risk of death is living. And at this point, I certainly fear not living a lot more than possibly dying. So if I'm just sitting on my couch at home, I have a heart attack when I'm 90, or if I'm out flying and having a great time and crash and die when I'm 50, I think I'd much rather take the enjoying and going out at 50. Woo! Uh, talking about, you know, getting hurt. Once you launch, you're gone. You know, it's down a valley with no one down there and I, and I launched, I was by myself. I don't know, I just, I thought I had it. I was pretty cocky. Um, I got pretty damn hurt. So my injuries consisted of two comminuted ulnars, both my right and left arms both have eight screws on them each. I broke two vertebrae, burst fractures, my T4, my T8, and I uh, had several fractured ribs. The night before Scott's accident, he went on the same flight and he said, if I'm not back at this time, start to get worried. And so he wasn't back at that time. I started to feel a little bit nervous. Flew it, it was absolutely stunning. Um, I told Asia a specific time I'd be back. And um, I noticed I didn't have much time to meet that, meet that time. So packed my stuff and I ran off down the river. And so I was walking up this river and every corner that I went round, I was scanning the like side of the mountain, trying to see if there was a deflated wing, seeing if I could see him lying anywhere. And then at that point I started running. I was just running up this river, crying, bawling my eyes out. I was like, Scott, Scott, Scott. Like, so terrified, genuinely thinking he was fucking dead lying on the river somewhere. Oh, successful little mission. Look how stunning. And so I'm running up there, blubbering, an absolute mess. And then next thing I know, Scott just wanders around the corner with a hunter just chatting away. And he looks up and I'm like, I thought you died. He's like, oh, sorry, babe. And like runs across the river and gives me a kiss. So anyway, that happened the night before. It was so pretty, so stunning that I wanted to go up there the, that night and um, replicate it. Coming into land, I kind of just had one spot in mind, the exact spot that I landed the day before. I didn't take into account that the uh, fauna was different. The trees expand at the top and they don't taper off at the top from what I'm used to in Colorado. And um, I came too close to some trees and clipped one with my right wing tip. And Spun me around about 30 feet in the air and it's going about 60 miles an hour in a dive to try and swoop and land and yeah, luckily I'm here to talk about it. Derek and I have been pushing some new lines in the San Juan Mountains, uh, near Silverton and uh, Lake City. Part of me does want to go back to the zone. Yeah, there's some cool rather stuff than, in that area. Rather than Silverton, because uh, that's pretty damn cool. 280,000 miles. Four fucking Ranger. <laughs>
LZ is good, the weather's good, the direction's good. Just gotta find a launch and then this will be fucking sweet. Pretty addicting, yeah? yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So much Fuck so. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Try to get going by like 6.15. Yeah. Up there around 8 probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're out flying in the dark. There's a way through there somewhere. Ricky, a little, little 3,000 foot climb and then a breakfast and a bottle. Oh, really? Mmm. Thick. You want to do it again this afternoon? Do it, man. Yeah? Fuck yeah, bro. Love it. Maybe not go up the same way, but uh. Yeah, we can find <laughs> something a little faster getting up. Cool. Yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Nice. Woo. Golden goose of the sand wines right here, mate. Get all splashdowns, eh? I think we have a little bit of drain pushing. So us get through. get to drying out here real quick. Have to go for another flight. Yeah. <laughs> so, put simply, my goals and ambitions with speed flying uh, just to be the best that I can possibly be at it. I've always strived to be the best at what I try. I don't think there's any point in trying something half-assed. My more recent goals with speed flying are to get a sponsorship or some kind of professionalism. I travel the world and fly off new exciting mountains and uh, if I can get a name for myself out there being the first ascensionist on a lot of new mountains then, then I'd be pretty stoked with that. We want to find those lines out there in the world that are 6,000 plus feet of uh, relief. We want to push big high altitude mountains, we want to go to intrepid places, we want to find new cultures and really push this sport into uh, the, big, the big mountains. I've always loved mountaineering and alpinism and if I could tie that into speed flying as well, then uh, I think I've got a pretty cool life ahead of me. Karakorums, the Himalayas, Patagonia and Chile, even go down to New Zealand and find some stuff that's uh, off the beaten path. It seems that pretty much everything's been climbed now, but I think the next thing is how do you get off the mountain and how cool of a way can you get off that mountain. You know, it's uh, human nature to want to explore and I feel like a lot of that exploration has been done, but now it's all about pushing the boundaries of that exploration and how thrilling of a way can you, can you play off that terrain.
the human potential is a lot higher than what we think. I guess you could say I'm just one of those guys pushing that boundary and seeing what humans are capable of and enjoying every second of it.